It's Derby Day. It's the most important race of the season. The most important race in the world. And today, it comes to you live from Epsom. Um, also on the card as well, the Phillies Classic, the Epsom Oaks, will take place just beforehand. And Leon and myself will take a quick look now at the runners in today's race and see if we can point you in the direction of the winner of both the Derby and the Oaks. First the ladies then, and let's take a look at the Oaks. Ten in the field then for the Investec Oaks, and to be honest, no solid standout performer, although quite a few of these have met a few times this season, the Cheshire Oaks, last time out being um, a race where quite a few of them had a run. Taking a look at what some of the trainers have said, Padre Hogan thinks that Idlewise has got a real chance on the go, although he does admit that he's probably, she's probably just a handicapper, and he's tilting at a little bit of a, a windmill. Leon van Rensburg, though, is far more bullish about Mistress of the Baltic, and he thinks that that one has been running well over trips short of its best and should be in for a good run. Craig Allen, who threatened retirement, of course, last season, and normally does well in these big races, doesn't seem to think that he's got the same firepower as last season, but still wouldn't rule out persuasive rows. So taking a look from my point of view, then obviously there's one or two you can put a line through straight away. My horse for a start off Poe Valley ran a good race to finish fourth in the Kentucky Derby a few weeks ago, but absolutely bombed out at Chester last week and really has no chance of turning the tables on the protagonists in that. The one that I would be most interested in this race, of course, would be the winner of that race, Rivera, who won that one really well, just getting up on the line and looking like she could probably do it a little bit further. The downside is that that was firm going that day and it's soft today, so whether the going will suit that poor road charge, we'll have to wait and see. His second horse is interesting as well because Fiddler on the Roof was finishing quite well in that race and finished third behind its stable mate, but there's absolutely no reason why that one couldn't turn the tables today over an extra furlong. That race last week, remember, was a mile and three. This is a mile and four. So Paul Rhodes has already had a bit of a good run in the classics this season. He's got a live chance of maybe even making a one-two in this one today. Looking at some of the other contenders, Shimna Camella for Dan Hughes. He's had a good season as well. Dan Hughes and Shimna Camella, you wouldn't put anybody off that one despite a really bad run last time out in that Cheshire Oaks when it was always out of pace and only managed to finish seventh. But again, may do better today on the softer ground. David Robertson is another person who's had an absolute flying season. He's got Cloche and Ballet, the one at the top, which probably hasn't quite got the form to win this, although it is one of the higher rated horses in the race. It was well beaten at Chester last week and it's difficult to see it turn the tables on the horses that beat it. Darren Thompson has also got a live hand today with Swartz Corner and Winthorpe Harbour. Now, Winthorpe Harbour was a winner last time out, but this was only in a 0 to 100 handicap. But all you can do is beat what's put up in front of you. And he hasn't done a great deal wrong on this horse, and it's um, probably a live outsider, although he would probably think that his other one, Schwartz Corner, would have more of a chance having won the Julie Gaultier Memorial Maiden on the opening week of the season, and then last week running a decent race, staying on again towards the end, coming with a late run in the Cheshire Oaks. So it's a it's a wide open race in this Oaks. I wouldn't actually put anybody off anything except maybe my horse Po Valley, but for me, I think Fiddler on the Roof looks like the one who might well turn the tables on Stablemate Rivera over that extra furlong. I'll probably expect to see. Something like Mistress of the Baltic or Winthorpe Harbour running into third. Right, the Oaks preview. Um, Martin asked me to do a couple of tips for the Oaks. So, in this race, I'm looking at the uh, Darren Thompson and the Paul Rhodes horses. Also, Dan Hughes has had a good record in the Oaks. But I think I'm going to go for uh, Darren Thompson's Winthorpe Harbour to win this. Improved last time. I know he's not rated as highly as Rivera. Uh, but the Paul, the professor horse must have some sort of a chance. But in the softer ground, I'm going to go for Darren Thompson's Winthrop Harbour. Probably look like the ground. I go for Rivera to be second. I do like my horse, Mister of the Baltic, but the ground's really not in her favour. So I uh, doubt it will feature. So Darren Thompson to win it for me. Winthrop Harbour from Rivera in second, and I'll go for my Mistress of the Baltic to finish third. So, moving on to the derby then. Now, let's have a listen and see what Leon thinks, first of all, this time. Right, the derby and the ground is probably going to cause some issues here for some. So, the soft ground raiding party mine has the best chance I've ever had of winning a classic. Really does like the soft ground. And no, it doesn't say that there, but 
he wins my soft ground trials so Radiant Body has a huge chance saying that he's got a lot of ground to find on both House Hayden and Morse so I'm gonna go with the Paul Rose horse here he's been second three times but House Hayden has had an easy lead the last time and I don't think he's actually normally a front runner so I'm gonna go with Morse to win this I'll go with Radiant Party to get close and maybe get second I'm doubt I'll get an elusive classics winner yet um, House Hayden I'll go for third so it's a Moore's for me to win from Radiant Party in second and House Hayden for Dan Hughes to finish in third that's my one two three for the derby unlike the Oaks then the derby does have a standout horse the unbeaten House Hayden for Dan Hughes that one won the Chester Vars over the four mile and a half trip last week it made pretty much all the running and didn't look hard pressed to win at all its previous win came back in week one of the season winning one of those hot maidens so there's really nothing that you could look at in the form of house hayden to pick holes in the only one thing that you could say that might catch it out is that its victories were on good going on week one and were on firm going last week and this week it's soft and by the time we get to the derby we already have had the oaks and the coronation cup run over the same course and distance so the ground might be getting a little bit cut up and that could possibly be the only sort of fly in the ointment of House Hayden who you really couldn't knock at all at the moment. As with most people then who like to have a little bit of a flutter and always looking for something to turn over the red hot favourite because House Hayden is sure to go off a pretty short price and looking at the runners you've got to say there isn't really anything there that looks like you could seriously suggest that it would beat it without a little bit of luck. Mort is one to obviously look at for Paul Rose but I for one don't like horses that keep finishing second and that one's finished second three times on the trot now including last week when it was second behind House Hayden and it pulled hard that day and it will have to settle a lot better today if it's going to perform better in on the plus side that it did win on the soft going in week two but that one was just a 0 to 90 handicap and since then it's been beaten into second in a 0 to 80 handicap so it's very difficult to make a case for Morse although on figures alone it does look as though it's got some pretty decent form and it is the second highest rated in the race rating 10 pound inferior to house hard and i would suggest it's probably quite a little bit more inferior to that one the rest of them well there's nothing particularly strong rating party for leon van rensburg is the next the next highest rated and leon seems to think that one might finish in the first three that's as best as it's done so far this season it managed to finish third last time out that was once again in the Chester Vars. It does seem to be the Chester meeting that has brought out all of the contenders for today's classics as the, the races at York don't seem to have attracted any runners at all to this. But it's very, very difficult to see how that one's going to be able to turn the tables on all the Morse or House Hyden unless the going is a major factor. And this one does appear to be able to go better on the soft than the first two, although it's very, very difficult to tip. Other, other horses in the race look like they've got a little bit of a chance. Taranga, Trapanga eyes for Darren Thompson. You can never rule out a Darren Thompson horse, even though this one's only rated 85 and was running on the all weather last week and only managed a third and a naught to 85. That one could come into its own again on the soft ground. We haven't seen it on the soft ground. We've only seen it on all weather and good going. So that could be a bit of a dark horse or an each way bet. Nettleton Hill, the second Darren Thompson horse, has been absolutely awful in these last two runs although they have both been over in the american triple crown races the kentucky derby and the preakness not managing to finish in the first nine in either of those races before that though had turned in a decent performance in the 200,000 tattersalls three-year-old trophy when it managed a second and that was on soft going so that could give you a little bit of a hope that that one maybe just didn't like the dirt over in america and will spring back to life on the soft going paul Rhodes has got another one in there as well as as morse he's got inferno storms again that one doesn't look to have a great deal of chance on its form although it did run in the group one handicap the bmw against the older horses last week difficult to see that one coming into it though it's difficult with its poor for performance in the classic trial in week two and it really doesn't look anything special at all that one country craft toss for james shea giving one of the middling trainers a chance in the race but it was beaten in a 0 to 80 handicap last week so it's difficult to see that one having much chance especially as he's beaten even further in a 0 to 80 handicap the week before so i wouldn't 
fancy that one so that will give a chance that's one of the lower rated in the race the two lowest rated are fear the man for michael scala although that one did run in the donty last week and managed fifth it'll be interesting to see how the york form stacks up against the chester form another interesting thing is we've actually got some classic form in this one now because this did run in the 2000 guineas although it finished a disappointing 14th and never looked like trouble in the leader so it's difficult to make a case for that one but that was probably just come for the day out as has gambit the martin leadham trained horse who doesn't really look to be up to this was seventh in the chest of ours last week well beaten was third in a nought to 90 year in the season but really he's just in this because it does go well on the soft going and hopefully some of the main protagonists will not perform on the soft and that's pretty much the only chance gambit's got rapturous calm for craig allen who claims that this one is nowhere near as good as the horses he had in last season and that would seem to be borne out by its form as well as fifth in the chest of ours but did nothing in any other races previous to that and it will be difficult to see that one getting anywhere near the winner's enclosure and the final one to look at would be terrible ancient for david robertson difficult to make a case for that one as well as that was sixth in the chester art vase but david robertson is having a pretty good season and it's pretty difficult to see that one getting into the frame though so just to summarize then what we think on house hayden if it goes in the soft it should win pulling a cart if it doesn't go in the soft then could one of the outsiders get up and take it well i would think maybe the one i'd be interested in at a big price would be trepangarized but for me it looks like house hayden's got the form and got the class to be able to take this one they all go in the soft at least once and i think that dan hughes with a good start of the season would like to top it off with a second derby win after he took it a couple of seasons ago so house hayden to win it for me trepangarized to be second and raiding party for leon van rinsberg to take third so there you go, with the night. we've put you on a bit of a point or two, maybe what might take those two classics this afternoon. We've got plenty of other good races, a good supporting card at Epsom, including the Diamond Stakes, as well as the Woodcott, and Leon will be kicking things off at Newcastle for some all-weather racing, and then later on in the day, we'll be off to Foss Lass for a couple of big races over there, including the Welsh St. Ledger and the Welsh Gold Cup. So I shall hand you over now then to Leon at Newcastle to get the day's proceedings underway.